Perceive, process, perform. Do you need inspiration for your practice? Or do you simply need to practice inspiration? With this series, we aim to do both. Give us 15 minutes and we'll give you practice inspiration. Hi, I'm David Schwab. I do a lot of seminars for the Seattle Study Club. I do social media content for doctors. I make videos. We train the teams. But today, I want to do a practice inspiration called Converting Internet Inquiries into Patients. So let's get started. Now, internet callers are different. One of the things you have to understand is that, you know, we all are familiar with, oh, the patient calls to make an appointment. Well, how do they normally get to you? If it's a general dental practice, they may be referred by a friend, they may be referred by a family member, a coworker. If it's a specialty practice, they may be referred by another doctor. You know how to deal with those folks. But what happens when they're referred by the internet? Look, you spend a lot of money, you get the website all cranked up, you got the social media cranked up. You say, oh, we have a beautiful website and we really are proud of it. What's the goal? The goal is maybe somebody will find you and call you. But those internet callers are different and here's how they are different, okay? First of all, they have limited attention spans. People are not sitting usually in a quiet room with a pencil calling you and giving you their full attention. They're feeding the dog, they're talking to somebody else, they're driving their car. They have limited attention spans, so you have to realize that your message is competing with, with whatever else is going on in their life, okay? They're often multitasking. They're doing so many things at once, and while they're doing all those things, maybe you know, interacting with other people, how much of their brain is really focused on what you're telling them? It's not 100%, usually. And for a lot of these folks, dentistry is often not a high priority. If you're an internet shopper, that means that you don't have a dentist. If you don't have a dentist, maybe because you haven't been to a dentist in a while. So if it's not a high priority, that's kind of a different situation. So really, they're not maybe the best patients overall. Now, they may turn out to be the best patients, but right now, Dentistry may not be a high priority, but for some reason, there's a trigger and they're calling and they're looking for information, okay? And you know what? They are often procrastinators. We all put things off, but we all value, at least all of us value dentistry. A lot of these folks put it off and they've been putting it off and putting it off for a long time. And now, just because they're making an inquiry, it's not a given they're gonna actually follow through. And that's the next point. They're often not committed to the next step, which is what? To make an appointment, to come to your office. Sometimes they're just looking for a little information and our goal is to try to bring them in. And frankly, some of these folks are not financially qualified. Now, I don't think we should build the fence so high and keep everybody out. I wanna build the fence a little lower, get people in, educate them, and then see who really values dentistry, but it is, admittedly a different group of people and you have to understand that these folks coming off the internet they're shoppers they're a little different and we have to treat them differently and we have to have some skills involved now calls from internet calls from the internet from internet shoppers require on the part of the team they require intelligence they require experience they require common sense but you know what they also require specific skills and team members have the first three. They've already got the first three. They've got the intelligence, the experience, the common sense. I'm here to talk about the specific skill set that you need, okay? So here's the secret statistics that is costing the practice money. The secret statistic is that potential new patients, those potential new patients who call but, do, but ultimately do not appoint, that's it. Do you, do you track this? I mean, every day in a dental office, you get lots of calls. Some of those calls are shoppers, the internet people. Some people call and say, hey, where are you located? Uh, do you take this particular insurance plan? Hey, I've got a question about this procedure, and then they're gone. Now, if they call and they make an inquiry and they don't actually follow through with that appointment, do you track those? We need you to track those. Some doctors say, oh, that's not important because in my practice, we don't really get a lot of those calls. Well, if you don't track them, how do you know? And whether it's one a week or four a month or six a month or three a month, whatever that number is, you have to ask yourself, are we tracking it? Because if we're not, how are we ever going to improve it? So the first thing you need to know is how many leads are you getting from the internet and then how are we gonna convert them, okay? Now, here are some poor responses to how much does it cost because so many of these patients are calling and saying, 
How much does it cost? That's their first question. I'll give you some poor responses on the phone, then I'll go back and give you some good ones. One poor response is no response. That's deadly on the phone. Someone calls and says, well, how much does it cost? And the person is caught by surprise, doesn't know what to say, doesn't want to say the wrong thing, and they say nothing. Silence, deadly on the phone. Or they say, uh, uh, well, uh, and there's a loss of credibility there. How can you have credibility if you're not going to engage with the patient? Some people are taught to say, we don't quote fees over the phone. And then, hello, hello, where'd that person go? Because that's like, we're not even going to engage with you and talk to you about fees. Not a good strategy. Some people on the phone say, I don't know, I can't tell you. And again, it's a loss of credibility. It doesn't sound confident. It's not the best answer. And or we've got the people who take the opposite point of view. You know, they want to itemize it. They want to say, well, it's X dollars per implant and you need Y number of implants. So if we just do the math and then people are multiplying this in their head, they're saying, oh my goodness, this is getting so expensive. And then, hello, hello, where'd that person go? So those are the poor responses. Let's talk about the good responses to the cost question, shall we? One good response is all treatment starts with diagnosis. What a great concept. How much does it cost? Well, we'll be glad to go into that with you, but we want to tell you that all treatment starts with a diagnosis, which implies what? You're going to have to come in. Now, we will provide a range of fees. We will say fees range from X to Y, but of course, every case is different and we'd like to see you. So we're not going to try to hide the numbers from anybody, but we're going to be realistic about it, provide the range and tell them, look, everything got to start with a diagnosis. Now, the doctor will answer all your questions. You know you do this all the time, don't you? You, you answer people's questions all the time. People always have a million questions, especially these internet patients, so let's reassure them. And you know, we always tell them, look, when you come in, we're going to give you a specific fee based on your needs. That's what we're going to do. We're going to give you a specific fee. So you want to know exactly what it's going to cost? Come on in. We'll take care of you. Now, here's my system for dealing with internet callers. This is my patent pending, copyright protected, all rights reserved. Here it is for you. I'll just give it to you. The LEAD system, L-E-A-D. And it stands for the following. L stands for listen, very important. E stands for empathize, to feel with other, what others feel. A stands for assure, to let people know, hey, it's okay. And D stands for direct, because you want to direct these folks. Yes, you do. You want to direct them. You're not a pincushion. You're not just there to answer questions. You want to direct them to make an appointment. So let's take them one at a time. Listen, a great opening line. I'm here to listen and help. There are people who have had a story. They've been having a problem for five years or whatever it is. Maybe they're not in pain or discomfort, but they've had this issue and they've wanted to talk to somebody. And now for whatever reason, the window's open, they've called, there's an opportunity. And you don't just say, do you want to come in? No, I'm here to listen and I'm here to help. And here's a great thing, this is so important, please write this down. In case we get disconnected, may I please have your name and callback number. Look, large companies do this, medium-sized companies do it, and now small companies do it, dental practices do it, because so many people call and they hang up. And I've listened to recorded calls from excellent practices. You know what I've heard? Oh, I have a question. Call goes on for one minute, two minutes, sometimes 10 minutes. Then somebody says, okay, thank you very much. It's amazing how fast a patient will bail out or a potential patient will bail out of a phone call. Okay, thank you very much. And they're gone. They're gone. But if you get that callback number, now, we're not going to bug these people, but we will call them back once with great courtesy and respect in a low-key manner and follow up. And sometimes the follow-up is what matters. But, hey, this person <laughs> sounds like a great case. And after 10 minutes, they were gone. And sometimes the cell phone connection drops. We've got to find out who we're talking to. And here's a great question. What prompted your call today? What prompted your call today? Some people say, well, I've been missing this tooth for years. It's not bothering me. What prompted your call today? Uh, we had one gentleman who said he was going on a cruise and he'd never been on a cruise and he wanted to look good in the photographs. Well, he's got a deadline. We have to get this done before the cruise. Great to know this information. The echo technique means this. You're going to repeat back the patient's key points. So the patient says something and then you repeat it back. You know, I know I need to get something done. I know I need to do this. You know, you say you need to get something done. You're right. We're going to help you. We're going to give you options. Okay, the E stands for empathize. Empathize. When the patient reports a problem or discomfort, we want to say something like, I'm sorry to hear that. Now you say, oh, we do that. We have great empathy. But do you show it? True story. Lady calls a dentist office 
and she's very upset. She's on the verge of tears. And she says, I don't know where to begin. I'm so upset. I've been married to the same man for 31 years. You would think you're married to somebody for 31 years. You would know this person. Well, now he's got severe gum disease. His teeth are shifting and moving and bleeding. I know he's going to lose his teeth. He's so upset. I'm so upset. I feel guilty because why didn't I see this? And I'm beside myself and she's on the verge of tears. And the person on the other end of the phone, this is a great practice, by the way, with a very experienced front desk person. She said, do you want mornings or afternoons? How about, I'm sorry to hear that. How about we're here to help you? How about saying you did the right thing by calling? Because for some of these patients, these internet patients, making that first call is like, is like going to a substance abuse clinic. I mean, it's, it's a big deal to admit you have a problem. And say, you know, the doctor will do a thorough exam and advise you of your options. So we're gonna take care of you. We're gonna do a thorough exam, advise you of your options. And by the way, that word options, Yes, I know what you're thinking. It's a very powerful word because it empowers the patient. We're not going to do things to you. We're going to give you options and you can make the decision. The assure part is important. Look, these internet patients, procrastinators, low dental IQ, what do they think about dentistry? They're afraid. They don't understand. They had a bad experience at a dental office 10 years ago or 20 years ago or when they were a child. Assure them. The doctor always provides a personal touch. I know you do that. I can see it. But you provide a personal touch, tell him that. He or she is gentle and understanding. People need to know this. We have a state-of-the-art facility and we offer the latest treatment options. And finally, the doctor will answer all your questions. So now this upset or not really knowledgeable internet patient is thinking, hey, the doctor seems to be great, gentle, understanding, modern facility. They're going to answer my questions. What more could I want? just to come in, I'm convinced I should come in. And that is the whole point. And the last one is direct. You're not just there to answer questions, you're there to direct the conversation. So we want to get you in as soon as possible. Great tip. If you're going to get patients off the internet and pay all this money for a great website and everything else, and somebody calls and you say, we can see you in three weeks, you're wasting your money. You need to get them in soon. And if you've got an opening tomorrow at two o'clock, you can tell them, great news, we can see you tomorrow at two. Well, I don't know if that's really going to work for me. I don't know if I the best time. Look, we want to offer you our first available because it's important to get you in. So you have to try to motivate people to come in soon and have a slot for them. Control the conversation. Know how to answer the cost question and be confident, okay? And the goal is always to end the call with the appointment being made. It's not always possible, I realize, but we're trying to get more rather than fewer and we're trying to track it so that we can get our conversion percentage higher. That's what we're trying to do. So when somebody calls, we're going through our lead system. Now, take this LEAD system and do what many offices have done, laminate it, put it up in the office, make sure everybody knows it and understands it. If you have questions about it, call me. I'll be glad to answer those questions because I want you to convert those internet callers into actual patients. That's what I want you to do. Thanks very much for listening today.